Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to our various trainees spread all over the world and thank you for joining in our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss prostatitis, prostatic abscess and chronic pelvic pain syndrome. This is not a topic which is asked quite frequently but uh, it's nice to cover this topic why because once it comes in your 10 minute exam scenario or in long scenarios uh, it's uh, very easy to make mistakes and it's better to get the up-to-date knowledge with correct classifications and treatment algorithms we are reaching the 38th episode in our urology exam preparation we have a trainee welcome good afternoon mr d uh, it's a pleasure and privilege to take part in these sessions and i'm happy for this to be recorded and shared in the social media for the benefit of trainees uh, for the exams. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So let's drive into the scenario. You have a 48 year old man. He presents with you with history of weak flow and also pain while passing urine for the past 10 days. How are you going to approach him? So I'll see him in the urology clinic. Uh, I plan my uh, consultation like going through the history, HI prognosis examination and reviewing the investigations if anything available. Uh, in the history, I'll specifically ask for the urinary symptoms. I know he has got a weak flow. I'll ask if there is uh, about other obstructive symptoms, any storage urinary symptoms, any history of uh, incontinence or uh, any uh, red flag symptoms like hematuria, UT previous history of UTIs. Uh, any history of uh, regarding the pain, I, I'll see if uh, what's the duration of the pain, whether he has already tried any medications for the pain, uh, whether there is any previous history of uh, pain episodes, uh, whether this is associated with any swelling down there or any associated fever, any constitutional symptoms. Um, I'll also uh, ask about his uh, sexual history, about his uh, bowel habits, and uh, any neurological symptoms. This will be followed by uh, reviewing his medical history to see uh, the medications he is on, his comorbidities, any previous uh, surgeries done on him, especially any urological instrumentation or any pelvic surgeries, um, followed by uh, the social history where I'll specifically ask for his uh, lifestyle uh, fluid intake regarding the smoking history uh, alcohol intake, uh, his uh, sexual habits, and then followed by any family history of any uh, malignancy, uh, and easily followed by chaperone assisted examination, general examination, mainly to see for any constitutional symptoms uh, and uh, to see his performance status. Uh, this will be followed by a focused examination. Uh, so I will specifically uh, see for any uh, abdominal tenderness, any palpable bladder, any tenderness in the costo vertebral angle, the, the circumcision status of the penis, if the external meatus is visible, any signs of BXO, any uh, and examination of external genitalia, uh, and uh, will be, uh, I will do a chaperone uh, assisted consented digital examination to see for the size of the prostate, consistency, any tenderness while do, uh, doing the uh, DRE. And then I will complete my examination with a fo focused neurological examination. This I will also um, review his investigation. So I, I would like to have a urinalysis. And if there is anything abnormal, I'll send that for urine culture and sensitivity. I'll see the IPSS uh, score sheet and I would li I would ideally like to have a, a bladder diary uh, if he can bring it with him before the uh, plan planning of the consultation, and then I'll also do a flow rate and bladder scan for him. So this will be my initial approach to him regarding his symptoms. Okay, and um, in the history, one important thing is to ask about the psychosocial type of symptoms or any past history which can lead you to discuss regarding any psychosocial impacts like uh, traumatic events or sexual abuse, something like that. Um, how any other than IPS score, any other questionnaires which is very pertinent to this present situation? Yeah, so for a uh, uh, prostatitis, 
um, uh, scenario, I will uh, ask for a NIH CPSI uh, uh, scoring system. So that, that's a National Institutes of Health Chronic Prostatitis Symptom Index, which has got uh, uh, nine questions focusing on three domains. So four questions asking on the pain, two questions on the urinary symptoms, and three questions on the uh, quality of life and impact on the quality of life. So I will request him to fill that up as well. So approximately for the pain, what are all the questions? Um, uh, so for the pain, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure about the, about the uh, questions for the pain. Uh, but I know that for the urinary symptoms, it is one is obstructive, another one is uh, uh, storage symptoms. And for the qu uh, quality, uh, quality of life, there are two questions. And the ninth question is regarding the impact on the quality of life. Uh, sorry, regarding the exact questions for the pain. Okay. Uh, regarding pain, the, the easiest thing how to we can ex explain to the examiner is all the mm -hmm. questions were related to last one week. That's number one. That's and okay. the first question we'll ask about in last one week, what about your pain in the testicle areas between rectum and testicle, tip of penis, below your waist, more of local areas. And the second question in the last week, how are you feeling pain during voiding and during sex? So pain in the rest and pain during some action like maturation or sexual activity. And uh, the pain how often in any areas over the last one week, whether how frequently it comes, like rarely, sometimes, often, usually, always. The frequency will be the third question. The fourth one is just like visual analog score, no pain at zero and very, very bad pain as 10. As you said, urination is uh, measured by two questions, one almost covering the sensation of not emptying the bladder, which indirectly is a voiding symptom. And uh, the next question is more of like uh, how many times you need to void within two hours of passing urine. So it's almost like a frequency symptom. And then we have impact of symptoms, two questions and quality of life, one question. So we have to total the pain questionnaires, urinary symptom questionnaires and quality of life impact questionnaires. I understand we are not using it as frequently, but once you have a very good overall an eyeballing of this questionnaire you can easily reproduce and NIH stands for National Institute of Health it's mostly to do with US but we don't have a specific something similar in UK so it's better to quote the NIH CPPS symptom index okay yeah and um, this patient had uh, symptoms of weak stream and he has severe pain while passing urine there is also some amount of pain in the rest he's not a smoker drinks alcohol socially, has one child, not exposed to any multiple sexual partners. Examination shows everything normal except for minimal pain when you do deep palpation of the prostate. And uh, so how are you going to take it forward? His IPS score is uh, 19 out of 35 and quality of life is 6 out of 6. And that's all mostly boils down to the pain and discomfort so how are you going to take it forward? Yeah, so um, I have to review the uh, urine analysis and the urine culture to see if there is any growth in that. Ideally, this patient uh, with the suspicion of prostatitis uh, should have a uh, four glass test uh, described by uh, Mears and Stamey. And based on that, we, we, we can uh, classify uh, uh, the type of prostatitis that is ha is having. So my because of the tenderness of the prostate, my diagnosis will be prostatitis. prostatitis. Because uh, the history is short uh, and he has no uh, systemic symptoms of infection, I would think this as a chronic, uh, sorry, I would think this as a pelvic pain syndrome possibly, but I have to review the uh, cultures and see. So my first approach will be to do the uh, four glass test uh, and then reviewing the investigations. Okay. If there is a... Yeah. yeah, you said chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Is there any classification for the categories of prostatitis? Uh, 
Yeah, so it, uh, uh, it is the NIS classification. So it is divided into uh, f mainly four types with a subclassification for type three. So type one is acute bacterial prostatitis. Type two is chronic bacterial prostatitis. Type three is divided into A and B. Type three A is inflammatory uh, chronic pelvic pain syndrome. And type three B is uh, non-inflammatory uh, pelvic pain syndrome. And type four is uh, asymptomatic uh, uh, inflammatory prostatitis. So uh, this is based on the STAMI MIES test, uh, where uh, we have to use four uh, specimens of urine and ex uh, express prostate secretions. So we mark it as BB1, BB2, EPS, and BB3. Uh, so BB1 is the initial 10, 10 mils of voided urine that represents the urethral flora. BB2 is the midstream urine sample that represents the bladder bladder flora. Uh, then it is followed by a express prostatic secretion where a, a prostatic massage is done and the uh, prostatic secretions coming out to urethra is collected in a sterile container. Uh, it is recommended to have at least four drops of EPS to have a correct diagnosis. And this will be followed by another voided volume, which will be uh, VB3, which is also uh, the express process, prostate secretions that are trapped in the urethra. So uh, for uh, type 1 uh, acute bacterial prostatitis, it is diagnosed clinically mainly with the constitutional symptoms and signs of infection. Type 2 is diagnosed with chronicity of symptoms and presence of uh, bacteria in the express prostate secretions. Uh, type 3A is diagnosed with white cell counts. So uh, there should be uh, five more than greater than five to ten WBCs per high power field in the EPS and VB3 to diagnose type 3A prostatitis. Uh, type 3B is there is no presence of white cells or bacteria uh, in EPS or VB3 or its semen. And type 4 is uh, when the patient ha has no symptoms but there is presence of WBC or bacteria in the uh, uh, EPS or uh, VB3 specimen, uh, or it's also described in cases of uh, prostate biopsy when there is signs of prostatitis, but there is no patient is patient has no symptoms. Yes, you may come across sometimes patients had biopsy because of marginally increased uh, PSA, otherwise asymptomatic, mm -hmm. and MRI sometimes even shows pirate three areas. But uh, once you do the biopsy, it came as prostatitis. If you feed this back to your radiologist, it will be helpful for them to relearn that areas. And in future, with appropriate relearning, they can label this as prostatitis rather than labeling it as pirat 3 leading to biopsy. Sometimes even pirat 4 have shown prostatitis, patients being asymptomatic. Okay. And um, the, the practical another thing is when you are doing the expressed prostatic secretions, you can give the container to the patient and patient will be lying on his left uh, uh, lateral position. Patient can hold his penis and hold the container so that when you do the digital examination, patient will be helpful to collect the EPS because uh, only if you say a few things like that, the examiner will be convinced that you have done yourself. And then of course, BB3, again, patient will be passing urine, maybe in a toilet and um, whatever the express secretions which were not expressed enough to come out of the meatus, you will be connecting into the VB3. So EPS and BB3 are almost same. Sometimes BB3 will give you a better result. That's why once you collect BB1 and BB2, give some time break, have allow the patient to drink some water and then only patient will be in a position to produce VB3 otherwise the bladder will be empty okay Thanks. okay so what are you going to do out to our patient our patient is quite symptomatic you know the IPS score quality of life he has tender prostate so what are you going to approach him so um, the uh, I'll, uh, initially I, uh, I will counsel the patient that uh, the diagnosis of prostatitis uh, it's not malignancy, so I'll uh, I'll tell him that it is not a malignant lesion, and uh, I'll reassure him regarding the nature of the lesion. I'll tell him that it has got waxing and waning courses, and even sometimes, even though we cannot uh, treat the 
prostate is completely, we can always uh, try to control the symptoms. And my approach will be multi-modality approach. Um, so uh, the options of treatment includes uh, medical treatment, uh, then um, physical therapies, uh, and interventional options, and finally surgery. The medical options are uh, antibiotics, uh, analgesics, and inflammatories, uh, alpha blockers, and even 5-alpha reductase inhibitors are prescribed. Uh, physical therapies are uh, pelvic floor muscle exercises, myofascial uh, trigger release exercises, uh, then uh, uh, requesting the patient to practice relaxed voiding, and then referring the patient for uh, to a pelvic floor muscle uh, specialist to have supervised pelvic floor muscle training. Um, the interventional options are uh, uh, posterior tibial nerve stimulation and um, uh, neuromodulation. Uh, the EAU guideline says that it has got weak evidence to help patients with prostatitis. But uh, I think we are not practicing in, practicing it in our day-to-day uh, -day life. And then the surgical options are in, uh, in patients who are refractory to all these uh, initial conservative, minimally invasive options. Then the option of, uh, if it is really affecting, really badly affecting the quality of life, then the option of cystectomy, cystectomy can be discussed, but that scenario is very rare. Okay. Um, for his urinary symptoms, what is your choice of medications? So because of the initial, uh, because of the uh, combination of obstructive voiding symptoms and the prostatitis, I'll start him on a combination of uh, fluoroquinolone, ciprofloxacin, uh, alpha blockers, uh, and uh, analgesics. So I'll give this for uh, six weeks course. I will uh, review him after six weeks and see if that has improved his symptoms. Okay. Usually ciprofloxacin is for four weeks or to be correct, something like 28 days. Is there any caution or precaution you need to take before prescribing ciprofloxacin for such a long duration? Definitely. So we have to make sure that patient has no cardiac history of any QT prolongation. Uh, we have to make sure that there is no uh, previous history of any seizures because ciprofloxacin can decrease the threshold for seizure. And uh, we have to inform patient that if he is an athletic or if he walks quite a lot, then there is chance of tendon rupture, especially Achilles tendinitis and tendon rupture. And also, uh, not for him, but for patients on warfarin, uh, ciprofloxacin can interact with warfarin. So these are the precautions that we have to tell the patients. Okay, so regarding alpha blocker, which is your choice? So I'll start him on tamsulosin uh, because that, uh, that is the one of the commonest used alpha blocker and uh, uh, it is available as generic as, as generic prescription. So I'll start him on tamsulosin 400 microgram uh, once daily. Okay, so let us assume you are reviewing the patient in say four weeks or six weeks time. Patient symptom mm -hmm. not improved is um, stream is better he's able to empty the bladder better and uh, he feels that he's completely emptying the bladder but the stain is pain is still there what other options you have so in that case i have to rule out anything pathological in the bladder so before uh, uh, investigating for i mean before uh, giving him a giving him the further treatment options i would like to investigate him with the cystoscopy to make sure that there is no uh, uh, pathology like a stricture or a hypertrophic bladder neck or any bladder stones. Uh, so I will uh, arrange for a cystoscopy for him. Okay. The cystoscope shows normal urethra, no evidence of any stricture, meatus is normal. His prostate is nicely swollen on the left side, but the right side seems to be the normal prostate lobe. Bladder neck is normal, you are able to enter the bladder. Bladder mucosa seems to be normal except maybe like a like a grade 1 trabaculation showing that he may be struggling to pass urine. Bilateral urethric orifice is normal. Any investigations, any further steps? Um, 
so it is uncommon to see the trabeculations in such a young patient. So I would like to do a urodynamic study to see if it is a high pressure, uh, low flow situation, uh, considering his age as well, because he is less than 50 years of age. So that is an indication to uh, do a urodynamic study to confirm the diagnosis of uh, uh, high pressure, low flow situation. So I will arrange for a urodynamic study for him. Okay. And uh, during the cystoscopy, after the procedure, you are doing a DRE because of the unusual swollen appearance of the one lobe of the prostate. And you no. felt that your prostate, the prostate feels a little bit uh, boggy and uh, it is not as firm and uh, the contour is entirely different compared to the one which you examined four or six weeks before. Any change oh, in the okay. diagnosis? How are you going to proceed? Yeah. Definitely, sorry. So in that case, uh, I had to diagnose that as a acute bacterial prostatitis. So uh, it, uh, this is a uh, dangerous situation because uh, this can flare up into a septic episode. So uh, two things I had to do is to arrange for an imaging. I will arrange for a MRI scan of the pelvis uh, after discussion with the radiologist. And two, I will have a chat with the microbiologist and to see uh, because he's, he has already had a ciprofloxacin, uh, so uh, I will discuss with the microbiology team, see if there is any cultures previously, and to uh, um, arrange for the appropriate antibiotic treatment for him. If he has got any constitutional symptoms, I will admit him, uh, and I will follow the sepsis protocol. Okay, and um, how will you diagnose prostatic abscess if a patient has some symptoms similar to this? So clinically, uh, the prostate will be tender, soft, and boggy. Uh, uh, and also the patient will have severe uh, pelvic pain and sometimes constitutional symptoms. And this will be followed by an imaging. Uh, ideally, uh, if MRI scan of the pelvis is available, that is the best option. But if the MRI scan is not available, transrectal ultrasound scan is also uh, a good option to diagnose any hypoechoic areas on the prostate. Okay, you are arranging transrectal prostate ultrasound. What are all the findings in that for prostatic abscess? So I would like to see if there is any hypoechoic collection in any of the lob lobes of the prostate uh, and to see what's the relation of that collection in relation to uh, the zones of the prostate, whether it is more near to urethra or more near to the uh, rectal area. Okay. Um, let us assume that the um, collection is more towards the rectal mucosa and uh, not involving any blood and neck or not closer to the sphincter. So what is your next okay. step? So uh, I'll inform him uh, about uh, this finding and because it is near to the rectum, a transrectal aspiration is the uh, ideal option. So I'll give him the uh, antibiotic prophylaxis, take his consent explain to him regarding the procedure and then do a transrectal aspiration with a, uh, uh, a white bore needle and then uh, uh, under real time ultrasound guidance and make sure that the uh, abscess is completely drained. I'll send the pus for culture and sensitivity and then uh, we'll prescribe him antibiotics uh, uh, based on the microbiology advice. Okay, so what precautions you take when you send the pus for analysis? So it has to be in a sterile container and uh, it, it should be marked properly. And uh, we have to, uh, I mean, uh, it, it, it has to be uh, sent to the microbiology uh, lab as without any delay. Uh, so these are the things I know. Okay. The one other thing is you can send it in two separate pots, one for the normal bacterial culture, the other one for anaerobic culture. Uh, any difference in the pot which is sent for anaerobic culture? Oh, sorry, I don't know about that. Yeah, the pots which were sent for anaerobic cultures were appropriately sealed so that they are not exposed to the atmosphere because once they are exposed to the oxygen, the bacteria will die and then you may not get enough culture from it. So it will be a sealed uh, test tube like container where you have to place your collections and then rest of them you can send it in the normal culture bottle. Okay. Sure. What Thanks. culture results you are expecting from this patient? What is your initial treatment after the aspiration? So um, for this patient because he already had the uh, fluorokinolone ciprofloxacin, 
and it has not uh, responded to ciprofloxacin i think uh, uh, my further uh, treatment option will be guided by um uh, microbiology advice but i know that two of the other antibiotics that has good good prostatic penetration are trimethoprim and clindamycin but sometimes if uh, these are not appropriate then we have to admit the patient and once we have to uh, in, in my practice once uh, the patient responded only to astrionam so i think it is mainly guided by the uh, microbiology advice and um, second thing i will continue his other uh, uh, symptomatic treatment like analgesics and alpha blockers uh, and i will review him again to make sure that his symptoms are improving so what is the commonest uh, organisms which can grow in a prostatic abscess in a, uh, the most commonly around uh, 60 to 70% of the cultures will grow uh, e coli the other organisms are proteus klebsiella uh, uh, and uh, serratia and enterococcus okay very good so you are starting the patient on anti inflammatories painkillers and antibiotics as we discussed when are you going to review the patient what may be the long term sequelae for these patients so for this patient with a with a acute um, abscess uh, uh, long term sequelae are uh, chronic uh, pelvic pain syndrome uh, uh, possibility of uh, recurrence uh, and uh, possibility of uh, inf- uh, uh, i mean persistence of urinary symptoms and uh, for him it is 40 he is 48 year old so infertility i believe should not be a problem for him and um yeah i think these are the uh, long term sequelae of having a, uh, a acute bacterial prostatitis sometimes it can affect the sexual function as well afterwards okay very good when are you going to review this patient so initially uh, i will because of the uh, acute nature of the uh, symptom uh, i will review him in two weeks time make sure that he is not progressing to any uh, septic episodes and his symptoms are responding to antibiotics Be- before sending him home i'll i'll tell him that if he is developing any constitutional symptoms and he has to come back to a immediately and get admitted to uh, escalate the antibiotics uh, if his symptoms are improving then i will review him again in six weeks time and at that time i will repeat the uh, ipss and iscpsi your analysis and fluoride bladder scan and the clinical examination okay how long you will continue his tamsulosin so uh, if uh, he is not bothered about the side effects of the tamsulosin i would continue for it for at least 6 months and then give a trial of discontinuation to see if his symptoms are uh, persisting or not sorry improving or not okay very good we can conclude the discussion now so this is not a very common scenario but when the scenario comes you will be expected to say the nih classification of uh, types of prostatitis which we have detailedly covered nih symptom scores which also we have gone through very well when you review this presentation in our youtube channel you will be seeing the whole nih questionnaire so that will be a good source for your revision and uh, there is a very nice flow chart in BJUI 2015 publication of guidelines from Prostate UK group and uh, I have tried to reproduce that uh, flow chart in our YouTube channel and um, I will try to send uh, the links in the description of the YouTube link it has both a kind of a detailed guideline and also a kind of a quick check guideline so that uh, both will be useful the main things in prostatitis are differentiating the acute prostatitis from the chronic one acute is not an exam scenario mostly it won't be asked and in the chronic one the most important thing is to differentiate from the infectious and non infectious reasons so classification is very useful apart from the urological concepts like anti inflammatory painkillers antibiotics and alpha blockers think out of the box about involving the multi department inputs like uh, pain team antidepressants and uh, tricyclic antidepressants like gabapentin and other things um, including a, 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 something like a psychosocial worker make sure the patient is happy with the sexual activity even though in the acute phase the sexual activity may not be as good 
in the chronic phase patient may need something like a PD5 inhibitors. So this should be an input from multi-dimensional input and no few things about how are you going to do that uh, VB1, 2, 3 and EPS collection. You have to able to reproduce as if you have done it in the clinic that will satisfy the examiner. What is the commonest uh, organisms and what are all the possible antibiotics and by chance unfortunately if the patient progresses to prostatic abscess how are you going to deal with it how will you decide whether it's a urethral transurethral drainage which requires anesthesia while transrectal drainage if it is more towards the peripheral zone doesn't require anesthesia uh, a good local prostatic block with a transrectal ultrasound and how you are going to send the specimen both for aerobic and uh, anaerobic culture parts that's quite important any questions you have before we conclude the session yeah uh, so when i was preparing i read about the two glass test as well so uh, and i could see from the notes that it is equivalent to four glass test so uh, but still we had to say for the exams it is four glass test that we prefer uh, you can say two glass test because practically it's uh, equally good because we are not really expecting a urethral infection because uh, the GP most probably before referring the patient to you may have done uh, STI evaluation so that VB1 is almost ruled out and VB2 we are not much bothered because the symptoms are most to do with the uh, bacterial one and the two glass test the first class is almost equivalent to VB2 and second class is almost equivalent to whatever the EPS and VB3 secretions. So the two glass test almost gives you the same outcome compared to the four specimen test except for the urethral secretions. Okay. Any other right. questions? Uh, no, uh, that's clear now. Thank you. I mean, uh, uh, this comes in the infection part of the Yes, uh, isn't it? Yeah. this comes in the infection table and uh, very rarely prostatic abscess can come in the emergency table, but acute prostatitis is usually not asked. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much. For very good. For the trainees who have joined us in the YouTube, uh, you will be having the links for our further complete playlist on your right hand side and also the subscription button in the center. I hope you will subscribe this channel and continue learning. Hereby we say class dismiss.